you were quite feral, really, being on a farm. As soon as you could toddle, you you were outside, sort of running amongst the cows as, as far as it was safe and quite an outdoor life, really. My granddad was um, an engineer and um, my ambition was to work at Rolls-Royce and follow in his footsteps. Um, but um, for various reasons, I completely failed at school, so that wasn't an option. I think when you're young, you, you copy what other people do, particularly when you've got a strong father figure and he's running a farm. You, you know, the, there are ways to handle farm animals that, um, that you have to follow simply to get the job done. I began to sort of feel conscious of the fact that the animals had feelings and sort of um, led to feelings of unease about actually eating them when we raised them and um, you realise that they do have personalities and they experience the world. Uh, they're not just um, sort of robots that eat and, and sleep. I couldn't sort of disconnect that feeling of having to get the job done from the fact that they were individuals rather than just sort of units of production. <laughs> just more than a number, really. I came to um, Bradley Nook Farm uh, in 2006 as a student who had to go to an English-speaking country for an assignment. And I chose to uh, drop city life for two months and work on a farm. Jay was talking about how he doesn't like very much um, what he's doing with the cattle farming and that he really would like to do something different. And uh, by the end of the two months, he said, uh, why don't you come and live with me and uh, we start something completely different. I came here with the intention of changing the farm to something that would not involve uh, taking animals to the abattoir. Taking them to the abattoir, which is what we often did being small farmers, we only had one or two animals to um, to be slaughtered at any one time. You felt as if you were betraying them because you'd made friends with them, if you like. And so to all of a sudden, one day, load them into a trailer, something they'd not experienced before and you knew that you were taking them to uh, what must be a terrifying experience. It was soul destroying, that's how it felt. It was, it was, um, it was very difficult to do, but wanting to keep the farm working as a farm. I just needed to keep doing it until I could find what else to do. I had come 10 years ago to do something different with the farm and for various reasons it had not happened yet and I just wanted Jay to get to the position where he can do something different because it is so obviously destroying him. Looking at Jay and seeing what um, being trapped in this kind of life did to him was quite painful. We often 
got so tense that we started having arguments because we just nobody could cope with the situation. I think I I am more capable to harden my heart than Jay, just uh, out of sheer necessity. I I sort of had a more utilitarian outlook at you know you know we have to do this and this is what we do and if we don't do it then we don't pay the bills but uh, you know you know what you're doing and it's horrible it became clear that we really have to find a solution what we can do with the farm to keep the farm to keep the wildlife on the farm and to get out of cattle farming. It had been suggested from various sources that uh, the best solution would really just to sell up and go away. Selling up the farmyard and two fields and, uh, you know, taking the money for so many houses being built and walking off rich people was not something that we wanted to do. After my father died, um, I didn't have the excuse really of sort of keeping him happy by maintaining the farm as he wished. But I simply didn't know what else to do. At first, we installed a small number of solar panels, thinking that was a way to kind of offset the environmental impact of the, the farm. Then we tried to get planning permission for a wind turbine, but uh, that was refused. Somebody told me that um, you can produce vegetables and crops without animal inputs um, so you don't feel that you're implicating animals in in your food production and so uh, yeah it sounded excitingly different and felt like the future it was actually quite stressful to then quickly come up with details seeing the architect and discussing things, you know, what is possible and um, what do we have to do to get there, and to come up with some kind of plan so that we would not plunge into a complete black hole and, uh, you know, basically drop the farming and, and, and end up with nothing. We um, had the farm assessed and uh, we knew that we can do something different with the farm and it would be viable. When you're born on a farm, when your parents have farmed the farm, you want to sort of make things at least as good. I know it's a clumsy way of saying it as they have been previously. You don't want to sort of feel that you've been responsible for things degrading and literally falling apart. It's scary because it seems so far out after a lifetime of animal farming to sort of say, OK, you can manage without any animals at all by vegan organic agriculture. As winter came to an end, we started to think, well, you've got all these cows on the farm, what, what'll happen to them? Will you send them to market or or maybe send them to slaughter. And I said, well, that wouldn't be a good way to start vegan farming. We'll try and find them places at sanctuaries, but it'll take a long time. We've got to organize this and deal with the reality of the, the cows leaving the farm and it's going to be a massive change. You sort of think, am I doing the right thing? It was quite scary for me because I was kind of rejecting everything I'd known up till that um, day, really. To do something as radical as getting rid of the livestock from the food chain seemed threatening to 
most of agriculture, I think. It kind of distanced us from the other farmers in the area. In fact, the farm was nicknamed the Funny Farm by some local residents. I think that it is largely underestimated what pressure farmers feel. I think they could do with more support to look at things differently rather than being attacked. The cost that we had been burdened with from doing what we're doing is basically losing the money that we would have made from sending the animals to slaughter, which would have been you know, roughly 40 to 50,000 pounds. Accepting that we would lose the income from selling the cattle was not difficult at all. Trusting that there are enough people out there who appreciate what we are doing, appreciate what we are trying to do, and who are willing to support us. Hello, Teddy. It seemed that it would take a long time before places were found for the animals. Um, we'll have to sort of allocate six here and one or two at another sanctuary. It's going to take a long time. It took a lot of uh, planning. It took an awful lot of phone calls. And um, I assume that it was stressful for Jay as well, but um, he doesn't express that so much. But I know that I was terribly stressed. So we were amazed when they phoned and said Hillside in Norfolk can take the entire herd all together at one go. Calves and cows can stay together and all the family groups can be preserved. It's an absolutely sort of dream outcome that, that they can all stay together and live out the rest of their lives. We were very, very pleased. The day after, after our cattle had gone, we received the first postcards and letters from people saying how wonderful what we are doing. And um, a lot of people said, you have restored my faith in humanity. We have now finally managed to achieve the change that I came here to help with in the first place. And um, although we are still working on it and have not got the end result yet, it is quite a different thing to manage um, making plans rather than just the same old, same old that you are not really convinced of. I do think that it has changed Jay. The, the biggest change is, I think that he talks more about what he's thinking and, and, and what he's planning and what we're doing, and that is just so beautiful to see. I am not looking on how Jay is destroying himself, but we are actually working together to build up something that is really good and that we both are convinced of. And that, that, that is a good thing. That is a good thing. You can tell this sort of, you know, they don't belong to me anymore somehow. Everything that had bothered me about the process of beef farming in the past, All that burden of responsibility was lifted and um, it was just such a relief to know that um, the animals I'd been looking after would have a happy cowy life <laughs> for the rest of their lives. I know it sounds soppy, but uh, it was a joy really to learn that, that um, the ones who were still living on the farm were going to be saved, literally, and um, enjoy just being cows. <laughs> <laughs>